Welcome back to Switch Up, I'm Mark Walker. This is the series where we look at games that were released in uh, not the best condition and have since seen a few patches. I go back, record frame rates, do all the nerdy stuff, and then we can decide whether they're now worth picking up. As always, let me know down in the comments any games that perhaps I should feature in the next episode. If you enjoy this type of content and reviews, then consider sticking around. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a few of the biggest releases, such as Saints Row the Third, XCOM 2, Pine, and finally Ghost Runner. Are they all patched up? Let's find out. Let's begin then with Saints Row the Third. There's no doubt it's an excellent game, very fun indeed, and interestingly it seems to have much better AI than Cyberpunk, which I've been playing. Traffic actually respond when you fire a rocket-propelled grenade at them. But despite how much fun it was, when it was launched, it had some serious performance issues. There were times when it was dropping below 20 frames per second, it struggled to maintain its resolution at that frame rate, and it wasn't a pretty picture. Since then, developers have been working hard to bring it up in terms of the performance, and many of you mentioned on the last video that it's one we should check out. So here we are. Let's have a look at the frame rate then. Well, this is much improved. Now you do have two options to choose from. You can choose from dynamic resolution scaling on, which means it will try and consistently maintain that frame rate, but it does mean you'll notice the image quality can drop. The resolution will drop down, but for me, it's really all about the frame rate. Now I did try switching this option off, and as there have been a number of patches, I didn't actually notice a great deal of degradation in terms of performance, but in all honesty, I also didn't notice a great deal of image quality improvement. So essentially, I just leave this switched on to try and smooth out the gameplay. And that frame rate is aiming for 30 plus at all times, and it does seem to achieve this. It, for the majority of my playthrough, it was around about 35, 40. And that's where I'm not quite sure why they don't give you the option to lock those frames, because as many have mentioned before, a drop from 40 to 20 feels much more obvious than one from 30. Overall though, I will say it's a much improved game in terms of performance from its original release. Image quality, yeah, it's okay. If you're playing it on a large TV, it's not gonna look great. There's no two ways about it. Textures are pretty low res and there's a bit of popping, but it's still impressive to have it running and it plays well enough in handheld. I wouldn't have any qualms about picking this one up if you can find it on sale, or if you're a mega fan, then just go for it. It's much better than it was. Another one, and another one of my favourite games, it's XCOM 2. I absolutely love this, and I was so happy to see it come across to the Switch from 2K Games, but it had a lot of bugs at launch, actually. Many of them were related to either the frame rate or just weird glitches that took place. Now, I'm not going to turn around to you and say it's perfect. It's definitely improved. The frame rate, once again, is uncapped, and it seems to fluctuate. Generally, it will stick to 30 for most of the time, but it does dip below that and it can also go well above that. It feels predominantly quite a smooth experience, but I do think the CPU in the poor little Nintendo Switch is struggling at times. It, it will tank right down whenever there's a lot of computation taking place. Like when you end a turn and it's the CPUs go, you'll notice a big drop in the frame rate. I think if you know that going in, you're still gonna absolutely enjoy these games. They're immensely fun. Performance is certainly improved over the initial launch, and I don't think with the current spec of the Switch we're ever gonna have a buttery, smooth experience with XCOM, but hopefully it will scale with the Switch Pro. In terms of the visual quality, well, shadows are improved across the board, as are some of the textures. It's still not perfect. Things like the character shadow, when you zoom in close, are still made up of several squares. But when you zoom out, strangely, they look much better. And that's not just because you're further away. They actually seem to use a different map when you're when you're zoomed out, which is a little bit unusual. Textures are slightly better than at launch. And the hefty load times, well, they're still present. You're looking at about one minute, one minute ten if you include the uh, I'm still loading brief that happens before you land. Are they worth picking up now? Yeah, I'd say so. I enjoy them a lot, but I'd be trying to get them on a sale. Now hats off to Twelbound, the developer of Pine. This is one of the games that I have massacred the most since it came out. It was in several avoid lists. I reviewed the performance and just slated it. And well, here's why. When you first played the game back at launch, it took, and this is no exaggeration, it took five minutes 
for the game to load. Now that might not seem like a very long time, but my goodness, it's an age. And then when it did load, it was a glitchy nightmare. The cat, my character got stuck in the ground several times. There were rocks that would disappear. Entire trees and villages would just pop in and out of existence. It was horrible. And it, to be honest, it was a little bit embarrassing. Because once again, the eShop trailer, you guessed it, looked incredible. So it rocked up on the Switch's glorious shores and I tore it to pieces. Now, thankfully, Twelvebound are not the kind of developer to leave their game in that state, as, to be honest, many developers seem to. They've been back to it time and time again, and every time they go back, it gets a little bit better. So let's have a look at what it's like right now. As it stands, performance is so much better. They've almost got it capped out, completely locked out at a buttery smooth 30 FPS at all times. There are a couple of minor drops here and there, but it feels like a different game. The lock-on mechanics in combat are fixed. The villages and trees popping in and out are fixed. Draw distance, it's never going to be great. It's never going to be incredible, but it's good enough and it's certainly improved over the original game. Low times, I guess that's an area that certainly we want to know about. It's gone from 5 minutes for that initial load down to 1 minute 30, 1 minute 40, which it's still a little bit long, but when it's the only time you experience it, it really isn't too bad at all. The other load game transitions within the game are much improved again. They've come down from minutes to about 10, maybe 15 seconds. So much better in that regard. All the bugs and glitches have been, for the most part, ironed out. And it plays like the Pine game that I was hoping to experience at the beginning. And it is an excellent game. It's one that I now wholeheartedly recommend. If you see it on sale, you check it out. It has a really interesting mechanic whereby there's a load of settlements around the world. And each of them have their own standing with each other. So with one, you may have like run into one at some time and had a battle. Or stolen some of their crops. And your standing with them has dropped down to the point where they become hostile. But there are these points where you can give donations and do jobs for them to improve your overall standing. What's very cool about it is that, <laughs> unlike a certain other title, they genuinely have routines which they follow. So one of them might be a hunter and he'll be going around hunting for different animals and creatures. One might be gathering things. And each of the species is very unique. They look very different. It's a very good game and I'm so glad they've gone back to it. They obviously knew, hang on, we've got a decent game here, but we have launched it like a piece of turd. We need to clean this mess up. And yeah, fair play to you, they have. Pine most certainly now gets a switch up thumbs up. <laughs> if that is even a thing. <laughs> Last but certainly not least then, we've got Ghost Runner. This is another title which I was so looking forward to. I'd played it back on PC, gave it a little blast over there, was like, wow, these visuals are delightful. And then the Switch version dropped. <sighs> oh, it was The problem I had was the visuals were so blurry that I couldn't actually see the enemies. It got to the point where I thought I was like something was going on with my eyes. Got my missus in, was like, have a look at that. She was like, have a look at what? It was just a big blurry mess. Now we're up to version 1.2 now and things are definitely better. The frame rate is locked out essentially at 30 FPS. Again, there are minor dips here and there, but having it locked and capped out at 30 works well. What I will say now is I can actually play the game because I can see the enemies that are shooting at me. And yeah, I've had a bit of a good fun time playing it today. I did a couple of hours earlier on. Was able to blast past the sections that I just couldn't progress on earlier because I couldn't see. And it's not perfect. It's most certainly the Nintendo Switch version if you can buy it on any other platform then get it over there things like the draw distance scaling the, the the level of detail draw distance you can see it on the floor that's that's never going to change textures they're pretty muddy but they are definitely improved and the frame rate fair play it's rock solid and i will say that this game plays much better and it looks much crisper when you're in handheld mode so yeah i think it's a game worth picking up on sale if you can find it at a deep sale but having said that if you have any other platform it's really best experienced on, well, essentially a PC because it looks amazing and then just move down the list until you get to switch in terms of power. Still, got to have respect for developers that go back and visit their games again. Let me know down in the comments which titles would you like me to visit in the next list, particularly if they launched with awful performance. I mentioned in the last video that I was going to potentially run some of these through the M Classic and I've got to say, when you're going from 720p up to 4K, 
Yeah, I still need to do some more testing. It didn't look great. The game natively needs to run at 1080p for it to actually, I think, properly upscale it to 1440p and above. And yeah, it, I don't know. I need to do a little bit more work on that before I can give you a comprehensive is it worth it, does it actually do anything video. With all that said, do subscribe if you enjoy the content. A big thanks to all of you, the two new or three new patrons this week. And as always, from Glenn and I, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.